Now, just for comparison, let's try to solve this problem, uh, the vertical forces, CZ, DZ, and AZ, by using the method of moments. So let me just move this. In our answer earlier, we solved AZ, and it was 15.66. So this is 15.66, and so we'll try to solve these. This one, this one, and also this one. And so by method of moments, let's look at our system externally. And so first, we're gonna sum up forces along the z-axis. So we have minus cz, minus dz, and then plus az. And so let's just order that. And then we have minus 8.44 kn. Let's just convert everything into kn so that our results will also be in kn. So minus 8.44, this would be equal to 0. By the way, let's just remove this one because this was for the transmission of loads. And so we're gonna move this to the right side. This becomes positive. And so we have this as our first equation. Now next, we can take moments about the x-axis. Since we want to get the moments of dz and cz, we cannot take moments about the z-axis. And so we will not take moments about the x-axis. And so this is going to be our line. And so here we have cy acting away and also cx acting away. Now let's first look at point C. Now at point C, if we'll extend the line of action of CY, it's gonna hit the x-axis. And so that won't cause any moment. And then for CX, since it is parallel to the x-axis, it will also be excluded. And so what's gonna cause a moment is only CZ. And so since that's still unknown, we have minus CZ multiplied by the moment arm, which is 2.6 meters. Now sir, why is this minus? Let's treat this as the positive direction and this one as the negative direction. And so if this is my moment center, and then I'm gonna apply this force, CZ, it's gonna rotate counterclockwise about the x-axis. So this is minus, while for DZ, it's gonna cause a clockwise rotation about the x-axis. So this is gonna be plus. So DZ multiplied by the moment arm going to the x-axis, that's gonna be 3 meters. Now since this load, the weight of bar AB hits the x-axis, if we'll extend the line of action, it's not gonna cause any moment. And so this is now equal to zero. And then by the way, dx is excluded because it is parallel to the x-axis and then the line of action of dy hits the x-axis. And so we're gonna need another equation and so that will be obtained by taking moments about the y-axis. So let's remove this one. This is now our line. Now taking moments about the y-axis, the line of action of cx is gonna hit the y-axis. So that's excluded. And then cy, since it's parallel to the axis, it's not gonna cause a bending moment. And so only cz produces a moment about the y-axis. Now if this is our negative direction and this is our positive direction, then cz will cause a counterclockwise rotation about the y-axis. And so this is gonna be minus minus cz multiplied by the moment arm which is 3 meters going to the y-axis. Now let's look at dz. It's also gonna cause a counterclockwise movement about the y-axis. So we have minus dz multiplied by the moment arm going to the y-axis which is 2.2 meters. So let's remove this one. Now we will look at the external force. We have 8.44 kn acting right here. Now this is gonna cause a movement about the y-axis because this essentially has a movement arm about this axis. So let's extend the line of action. Since this is 4.5 measured along the x-axis and this is acting on the centroid, then this must be half of 4.5. And so half of 4.5 is gonna be 2.25 meters from this point up to point A or the y-axis. And then this is gonna cause a clockwise rotation about the y-axis. So that's gonna be plus. So plus 8.44 multiplied by the moment arm, which is 2.25, this is gonna equal zero. And then let's just move this to the right side. And then we will now change the sign. And so we have the following equations. Now using our calculators, press mode, and then equation, and then press two. And so EZ will be our X, CZ will be Y, and DZ will be Z. So X, Y, Z for the following variables. So our coefficient of X is one for the first equation. And then our coefficient of y, which is b, that's going to be minus 1. So minus 1, and then another minus 1 for dz. This is equal to 8.44. And then for the second equation, we have 0, since we don't have a term containing az. And then we have minus 2.6, and then 3. That's going to equal 0. And then finally, we have minus 3 for cz, which is right here. And then minus 2.2. And then for D, we have minus 8.44 multiplied by 2.25. So press equals. We can now solve AZ, CZ, and DZ. 
So press equals, we're gonna get AZ equal to 15.66 KN. And then CZ is 3.87. And then we have DZ equal to 3.35. And so since our results were positive, that means that all of our assumptions are correct. Now if we will try to check, we obtained this one, 15.66, which was the same earlier. And then we have CZ equal to 3.87 and DZ equal to 3.35 KN. However, we were able to save time because we only used the method of moments. Now to get the tension forces in BC and BD, just use these components, uh, CZ and DZ, and then try to get the resultant force by using the following. This is gonna be your workaround for the method of moments. And so it's essentially more efficient.